I've recorded this video as part of my programming course, but I think that this is something that everyone should know and apply in their programs. So have a look and enjoy. All right, so we have all our eight sensors already programmed. We have a block for each of them and we don't have to worry about them anymore because we transferred all the data to the inputs DB and now whenever we're going to want anything from a sensor, we're just going to reach for the data in the inputs DB. But we have eight sensors here and look how much place it takes. It's not very easy to find something here, especially when it's not eight, but for example, 80 sensors, okay? And you can have projects with 80 sensors easily, and there will be another 100 analog inputs, for example, and it starts to look like a mess because you have a data block with, for example, 1000 or 2000 rows. It wouldn't look really good. So that's why my idea is to put these sensors signal in a place where they will be a bit hidden, but still easily accessible. And luckily we can create such a place very easily. All we have to do, we have to add another tag here. So I will name this tag sensors and the data type of this tag will be struct, which stands for a structure. And now we have to put all that we have here inside of this structure. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark all of them and put them inside of this structure. And now you see all these networks got red because, well, it didn't expect that. It cannot recognize that the tags we were using are not the same tags anymore. They're not in the same place, but we're about to handle that in a few minutes. So it already looks better because we can collapse this structure and if we have more stuff handled inside of structures like this, it's going to be much easier to find something. But still, if you think about this, the palette sensor block only has four outputs, okay? And there are blocks that have, for example, 20 outputs. And sometimes you would want to put all of these outputs inside of a DB like this. That's why I think a better idea is to even put this signals for each of the sensor to a separate structure. So I would create a structure that will be called palette sensor. and we'll have all of these signals, out copy, out filtered, positive edge, and negative edge. Unfortunately, this kind of solution has its disadvantages because for example, I would have to copy paste this structure every time I want to use it. And also it's not so good for the PLC performance, but we've got even a better solution. We can create a PLC data type in here that will be a kind of predefined structure. So all I have to do, I have to create a new data type. I'm going to name it sensor. And what I'm going to put here, I'm going to put here an output interface from this block. So 
I'm just going to copy paste whatever is here. And look how nice it is. It even copied the comments here. So now the name of this PLC data type is sensor and now I can use it exactly like I would use a data type. So I can just type here sensor and it already has all of it inside with comments and so on. Isn't it beautiful? I think it is. So anyway, now what I can do, I can just assign these values here. So I can just drag and drop them here. I can also be smarter about it because if I am consistent about naming my tags and I'm trying to be consistent always, then I can use the replace function, which I'm going to show you in a second. So now I'm going to create a sensor tag for each of the sensors. And now to use the replace function, I need to know exactly what I need to replace. So let's have a look at the difference between this tag and this tag. So we have a new part here, which is sensors dot. So instead, instead of uh, inputs db dot sensors dot, we used to had inputs db dot. So it's going to be very easy to replace. And then I will have to replace one more thing, but I'm going to do it later. All right, so sensors dot instead of this. No, fine and I'm going to replace it in the entire FB. All right, and now, oh, this one doesn't match. I forgot that we've already replaced it here. And now one more thing that I need to do, I need to replace this underscore with a dot. So I think the easier, the easiest way to do that will be to do it for all of them separately. Okay. Seems like this one worked. And same for this. And seems like everything is fine. So that's how I use the PLC data types. There is actually one more thing you can do. You can replace the entire interface that you have it with one output only. So you could go inside of this block and just add another output here. Let's call it stat and give it a type sensor. And this way, all the outputs from this block could be replaced with one output only. I'm not going to do it in this case because it kind of makes the debugging of the software more difficult. If you are sure that everything is fine with your blocks and you have an easy way to monitor it in different places, then it's a good idea because it can make the programming, the engineering phase much faster. 
I don't really want to do that in this case. But keep in mind that it is possible. So now, when should you use a structure and when should you use a PLC data type? So you can use a structure pretty much anytime when you want to combine more than one tag, more than one variable together. But if you are using the same structure more than once, you should always go for the PLC data type. Why? Because then every time you want to modify something, you want to add another tag to the structure or you want to modify the name, you can just do it from the one central place and then it's going to be updated everywhere where you're using this PLC data type. So you should remember that structures and PLC data types exist and you should definitely use them because they're really going to help to keep your memory inside of your program well organized and it's going to save you a lot of time in the future, especially if you're working with more complex applications where you have a lot of data in your data blocks, they're going to be really, really useful. Okay, that's it for this lesson and see you in the next one. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something new that you're going to use in your programs in the future and join our Facebook group. It's free. You can ask other people about how to solve the problems that you encounter during programming in TIA Portal. And if you are serious about learning how to program in TIA Portal using good practices, then you might want to visit my webpage and leave your email there. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the other videos.